Welcome back to the Tool Crib. Today, I'm going to be installing or making uh, use of the dead space that I find underneath the first purlin of the building down to the floor. And the way I'm gonna do that is by utilizing two by eights. So I'm gonna take two by eights. First of all, this purlin is not quite level. So as we go through here, we'll jack the purlin up to level and then we'll take the measurement for these boards. So I'm gonna be setting these boards and I've already got one. And you can see where I've notched it around so that it fits the purlin. Two by eights or seven and a quarter. Uh, the purlin's eight inches, but with the brakes, it actually fits perfect when I make that notch. It sits perfect right to the back edge of the back brake. So then I've gone along and marked out every two feet where I want uh, my uprights to be. And on the iron worker, I made some brackets. This one is going to, has bolt holes to bolt it to the concrete and screw holes in order to fix the upright to it. On the top side, they'll just have holes on one side and we'll get them all squared in, leveled in, and then we're gonna stitch weld them uh, to the bottom of the purlin. And then from there, we can attach all the uprights. We've got 10 of these to do, and then we can start laying in the shelving themselves. Now for the shelves, I'm going to be using, uh, we're basically, we're going to be making a large bolt band for the majority of this or about half of it. So I'm going to be using these acro bands, which are really cheap. You can get them on Amazon. I bought a set in 96 and they actually fit perfect. Whenever we get everything together, they will be able to put about five wide in each of the two foot zones. And so I'm going to go about five deep, about uh, four inches deep on each one. These are about three, so we'll give it a little extra. And then from there, uh, that'll go five, uh, five wide at two feet. So that's going to be 10 feet. And the bottom will have enough space. Uh, we'll leave enough uh, room for putting stuff like buckets and you know, you just always accumulate hardware. And so for the rest of it, uh, I'll just make uh, shelving. I, I, they won't be at four inches. I don't know what I'll set them at, but uh, I'll, I'll make various different size shelves. And then at the, in, in the end, I'll be able to use the top purlin as well, because by then with all the uprights in place, it will be sufficiently supported. So let's get started. Okay, so I've got the first five in, and what I'm doing is I'm taking a piece of cardboard and taping it against the top here as I weld in the top angles uh, so that I don't damage the insulation. And as you can see here, we just uh, leveled top to bottom, make sure we got those completely leveled, welded those in, and then we're using uh, measure, measure out each one of them because the, there's a little bit of variation in the purlin. Uh, measure each one of those, cut them to fit, set them in place, and five down, five more to go. Okay, I've got the rest of the uprights in, a total of 10, so that gives me nine bays to work with. Now for the bolt bin, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna get some flat bar and make my own angle brackets. I was gonna try to use pocket screws on all this, but uh, I think it's just gonna be better if I just put angle iron. First of all, it's gonna be stronger than what pocket screws will be, and uh, with the the weight of uh, you know hardware in there i just feel more comfortable with putting angles so the bins that i'm going to be putting in and i bought 96 of these uh i'm going to space these apart four inches so five and a half inches down to the bracket plus the shelf itself uh, out of uh, two by eight and that'll give me four inches clear 
Uh, I can put six bays deep in here and still have enough room to get stuff like uh, five gallon buckets underneath on the bottom side. So I'm going to utilize the first five bays as bolt bin storage. I'm going to make it accessible for 120, which I'll end up getting about 24 more of these later. And I'll have 120 bins for bolt bin hardware bin. And then for the remainder of it, I uh, haven't really decided. I might go staggering distances, uh, maybe eight inches, 10, 12, something like that, uh, just to put stuff of various different heights in there, you know, stuff like that. And then by putting all these uprights in, that has solidified the top as well. So I'll be able to use the top as a shelf. Now later, I'm gonna have a unistrut that, that spans from that purlin to this purlin, which is where the electrical and the air lines will be running down. So I'm probably gonna space them at four foot and put them right on centers of, of where I have these uprights. Um, it just make it a little, a little easier. That way you don't have uh, just stuff in the way here. I think four foot spans is plenty. Usually you go five foot for electrical. Uh, I'll, I'll end up just putting a couple extra in, go four foot wide, and that'll put them right in line with, with uh, every other upright. So I think it's going to work out well, especially with those bolt pins. It's actually coming together pretty much like I anticipated. Well, now I have to go get uh, a bunch of uh, flat bar, eighth inch flat bar, uh, so that I can proceed to go ahead and make all of my angle brackets for the shelves themselves. Well, I'm almost done with this thing, and uh, I want to show you guys how it's uh, how it's coming out. So, like I said before, I ran five wide on these buckets, and I ended up going six deep. And I was going to leave that bottom so that uh, I could fit stuff like five gallon buckets. But I think I'm actually going to go one more layer deep. Uh, that way, I have seven deep. And I'm going to go five wide with that. And then I can utilize little buckets like that to store, you know, the hardware that's not separated yet. So I'm going to go out to here with that. And I've got some of the stuff in here. Uh, not all of it, obviously, but uh, I, I ran out of material. So I got to get some more two by eights. Uh, but I want to show you how it came along and how I'm able to utilize the dead space underneath the purlin, which would normally be dead space in the shop by fixing uh, the uprights. And then running in each of the boards there uh, for shelving, uh, utilizing the brackets that we made on the iron worker. Both uh, those on the top are welded uh, for the uprights and then all the shelves. I put three on the, uh, on the side and just two on the, on the top there. And, you know, you have to, have to build those one at a time so you know you don't have room to get this, the screw gun in there so just as we go down but i think i'm going to add another layer to the bottom uh this bay uh, eventually my cnc plasma is going to sit here so i think i'm going to set up another bay that probably the first three shells will still uh, be able to accommodate these types of bins i actually went ahead and ordered another 96 of those because uh, i can utilize them in different places in the shop so I think the first three here and then varying different shelves. I got some of my electrical set up on this one and I've left these two bays open for the time being uh, to figure out the types of materials that I'm gonna put over there. But this is a pretty general look at, at how you can utilize the dead space underneath these purlins or at least how I'm doing it in order to, to organize a lot of my hardware get it up out of the way so it's not in toolboxes it's not sitting on tables it's in its own place uh and i already have the two by eight so uh, you know i i gotta go get some more uh but really all i've got into this is the cost of the buckets and the cost of the brackets uh and the hardware 
to make the shells. So the, the, the steel, it's obviously a lot cheaper because I have an iron worker to make my own brackets. If I didn't have that, if I didn't have the ability to make my own brackets, this would get a lot more expensive in a hurry. But as it is, uh, it worked out pretty, pretty well and I'm pretty happy with it. Well, this is, uh, well, one of my ideas for some shop organization, maybe you guys can uh, use it in your own shops or garages for that matter and be able to organize some of your stuff as well. My name's Ben, you've been watching the Texas Tool Crib. I appreciate you watching. I'll see you in the next one.